Yeah. Yeah. Mm. As you saw a couple of moments ago, Sir Edmund Hillary's great wish in his twilight years is the reassurance that all his and others' hard work with the Himalayan Trust in Nepal will be supported and will be able to continue. He tells us he's never asked for much before from this country, so what is it we can do? The Prime Minister Helen Clark is with us. Good evening. Good evening, Mike. Do we have a role in this at all? I think we do. The government over many, many years has made a small annual contribution to the Himalaya Trust of about $40,000. And Ed's trust, as we've seen tonight, uh, goes into education and health. And I think the government's contribution has largely been at the education end of it. So we'd certainly want to be carrying that on. So you can give him an assurance that the work continues. That seems to be his big ask. Well, firstly, I don't think it will be any great sacrifice to continue it at the level it's going. The question is whether New Zealand should do more in the future. I think we all know that Ed was the first guy to get to the top of Everest, but the people of Nepal were, were part of that effort, and he's then dedicated the next half century to supporting them as well. And I think it's important to the history and heritage of New Zealand that we keep that link. So in asking that question, should we do more, the answer to that is, yes, we should. The answer to that is maybe we should. And a, a lot of people are sitting around now thinking what can be done to mark the half century since the successful bid at Everest. I'm going to be asking Trevor Mallard to liaise with the family and with the people who are getting together to talk about it. And let's see what we can have to announce for the 29th of May next year when the big anniversary is. Because he's not a statue man. No, no and, and look, Ed Hillary is probably the greatest living New Zealander, but he's also the most modest man in New Zealand. He uh, is a very humble man, and I think that's why we all warm so much to him. He should, I assume, drive this thing. What he wants, he should get. I think the wishes should be paramount. Uh, certainly when we looked at how we should remember Sir Peter Blake, you go first to the family and the close associates and ask what is appropriate. And I think Ed's wishes are very important here. Very deep. Can I just cover off a couple of things, given it's Sunday night, it's been what I, I think most people would feel is a reasonably unusual week in this country. And you mentioned Trevor Mallow. One of them, of course, is the Rugby World Cup. Is there something the government or we should be looking at in the way we handle what has been nothing short of a disaster? Firstly, there's no point getting into a trans-Tasman slinging match over it. Uh, we've got to put that behind us and determine to win the cup. I think that would be the ultimate comeback. I personally don't particularly like the way the Australian Rugby Union rushed in with a bid on its own when the New Zealand Rugby Football Union couldn't meet the date, but that, that's water under the bridge now. I think if we then reflect on it, uh, one of the issues would be uh, should the Rugby Union and the government years ago have got together to look at this as a major event which needed to be uh, mounted thoroughly and it's and the so answer is they should have well, well, well probably but you learn all that with hindsight i guess the industry new zealand organization does have a major events uh, focus now and i think for the future sports bodies which are hoping to bring a major event to new zealand probably need to link up with industry new zealand and let's make sure we're all singing the same tune because from your point of view it is hundreds of millions of dollars down the drain people who won't come here now well they may come anyway i mean who knows the uh, rugby football union may well be able to schedule uh, some of its npc games to get people across the tasman when uh, perhaps some of the greater games aren't being uh, done over there of course, tourism is doing very, very well in New Zealand at the moment, and we would want to be leveraging off the back of people coming to Australia for the game anyway. Should McCaw and Rutherford quit? I don't think so. You know, in New Zealand, we're so quick to put the boot into people. You know, we want to cast the blame around. I don't think it's as straightforward as that, and I am not without sympathy for the position of the rugby union in this. All right, and the other story that has affected us uh, so deeply this week is, uh, is Baby Kahu Jury. Mm. What does it say? Does it say anything about this country that, I mean, we woke up this week and this, I mean, we cannot imagine that this sort of thing would happen in this mm. country, yet mm. it has. It has happened. And, and we can't for a moment accept that it is typical, normal, acceptable that it happens. It, it's, it's so unusual that we've been all shocked to the core. And we all feel for the family now, you know, eight days since the disappearance and just not knowing whether baby's alive or dead. So I think the main thing is just to keep hope and alive along with them while the police do their best. I know when I, I spoke to you at the beginning of the week there was some consideration going to be given to protection for people, high profile people. Is there anything tangibly or logically that we can do that we don't already? 
Well, probably not. If, if there are any threats, uh, obviously we can provide support for judges who are in high-profile uh, trials, perhaps of gang members where there might be retaliation, but we just don't know what the motive for this one uh, was. Was it something that the judge had done? Was it something Donna had done that had got some aggrieved, crazy person to take this terrible revenge? We just don't know. All right. Can I just cover off tonight's poll on One News? You uh, remain at 50%. Uh, your personal polling is up. What is it about what you're doing in MMP that has an environment presumably allowing third parties to flourish and yet they're all falling apart? I think people think this government's got on and done a lot of things. Uh, I'm out there in the community all the time. I'm meeting a lot of people who tell me with absolute conviction they're voting Labor for the first time. I think they feel we're on the right track. You would feel good that you weren't dented by the paint gate problem this week in that poll? Well, it's a funny thing that. We had almost no hostile reaction. Uh, most people thought that elements of the media made a meal of it. Uh, they felt the opposition had behaved disgracefully. Uh, they look at the big picture and they're not going to let something like that get in the way. It was suggested by more than one person this week was the week that the Teflon fell off Helen Clark for the first time. <laughs> I don't think the poll would be saying that. But you know, even using the word Teflon sort of sounds like, you know, I'm some sort of spin merchant. You know me, you ask a question, you get an answer. And I think people respond to that directness. Do you regret saying there were other MPs when there weren't current MPs? Well, the advice I had was that others had done it. Now. I know from the advice I had that pre-existing MPs did. I'm not making an allegation about current people because I don't have advice on Indeed, that. but having said that, should you have done it and not be prepared to back it up with names and then have to uh, back down? Well, no. It turned messy what, for you. What I referred to was advice I'd had that people had done it in the past. Appreciate your time tonight. Prime Minister Helen Clark. After the break, the Yates preacher defends himself. Am I here to bear witness? to the Jesus of the scriptures. Well, when all the fingers are pointing at Andrea, you know, I'm sorry. That's not the way the word of God presents it. I could always remember um, my uncle telling me, when the cloud and the mist covers our local mountain, Maunga Tere, there will always be rain to follow. Meridian Energy proudly brings you this one weather update. Hi everyone, we've got messy skies over the South Island tomorrow, cloudy in the west with some rain or drizzle. A cool southerly change races up the east coast with drizzle and patchy rain following in behind, but during the afternoon it will gradually become fine in the south. Up to the North Island, cloudy skies for northern parts with a fresh northeasterly and a few showers, mostly fine everywhere else, but a cool southerly will drag cloud and then some drizzle into Wellington and then up the east coast.